I'm currently living in Sweden with my partner George, who you'll see chilling in the background of this video every now and then. He's trying to seek a professional career of volleyball, and I've tagged along. With the end of the volleyball season, our time here in Sweden is coming to an end, which means we'll go back home to the UK for summer before hopefully moving to another country for the next season. So as we have to empty our flat, I'm trying to use up the little bits and bobs I have left in the cupboard so we don't waste anything. And also it's quite a fun cooking challenge to come up with recipes to use them in. This recipe makes enough for four meals, is gluten-free and can be easily adapted to be vegan friendly just by swapping the feta for vegan cheese. I start by turning the oven on to 180 degrees to preheat, then wash two sweet potatoes to remove any grit and dice them into about two centimeter cubes. The smaller you cut these, the quicker they'll cook. I prefer them to be small so they can be evenly distributed throughout the salad, so you get a little bit of everything in each mouthful. I add the cube sweet potatoes to a bowl to make it easier to mix and coat them in flavours before roasting. Adding two tablespoons of olive oil, you can use any oil, I just happen to have lots of olive oil left in the cupboard, a pinch of cracked pepper, a large pinch of salt, about one teaspoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of paprika, and one oh. tablespoon of cumin, if I can get out, and mix to coat. I use my hands, I find it so much easier to make sure I coat each cube, as you can really feel if there's any dry patches of unmixed spices or if there's sweet potato that doesn't have any oil coated on it. Tip them onto a baking tray. I keep the bowl to be reused shortly. Spread them out so they aren't all touching. Roast them in the oven at 180 degrees for about 30 minutes. This should be enough time to prep the rest of the salad. I then drained and rinsed two tins of chickpeas, placed them straight into the bowl used for the sweet potato, and mixed in the same flavours. Two tablespoons of olive oil, pinch of cracked pepper, large pinch of salt, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of cumin, still struggling to get this one out, and one tablespoon of paprika. I mix with my hands again to coat the chickpeas in everything. Place them on a baking tray, spreading them out evenly so they aren't all clumped together. I place them in the oven to join the sweet potato at 180 degrees. I want these to crispen up a lot as these will provide a crunchy texture to the salad. Next is the couscous. I place a large saucepan that has a matching lid on the hob but I don't actually need the heat from the hob at all, as the couscous will cook perfectly without it. The amount of couscous I had left in my cupboard made a perfect cupful. The ratio of cooking couscous is one to one, so I used the same amount of boiling water, adding one cup to the pan. Gave it a mix, added a good pinch of salt, placed the lid on, and left it alone. I find it so satisfying to know that when I come back to check this later, it will be so fluffy and cooked without any external heat. Now, whilst the chickpeas, sweet potato, and couscous are all cooking, I prepare the veg. Finely slicing one red onion, adding it to a large bowl that everything will be mixed together in. I wash about two handfuls of cherry tomatoes and slice them into six, for the same reason as for sweet potatoes, keeping them small to then be more evenly distributed in the salad. Time to check on the sweet potatoes and the chickpeas. They've been in the oven for about 15 minutes by this point. I remove them both and give them a little toss before placing them back in the oven. After checking them, they needed about 15 minutes to cook a little further and crispen up. Next I wash and slice three spring onions, placing it in the bowl ready to be mixed at the end. I roughly chop almonds, I did about two thirds of a cup. I don't want them to be too small and get lost in the salad. I want them to be in big enough chunks that you'll get a crunch of a piece in each mouthful. You can pulse these in a food processor if you have one. I don't, but then again I do just love chopping things, so I probably wouldn't use it anyway. But if I was to use it, I would just make sure I don't blitz them too much so that they go too fine in texture and then they get lost within the salad. Time to check the couscous. Removing the lid and giving it a thorough mix with a fork to separate it to make it light and fluffy. After tasting this, I realised it needed some extra flavour. So I added some salt, a drizzle of olive oil for taste, and also some dried mint that I noticed was pretty full and sitting in the cupboard waiting to be used. And the couscous will hold and take on this herby flavour really well. The sweet potatoes are now nice and cooked, and the chickpeas have dried out nicely, and when they cool down, they'll continue to crispen up. I leave these to the side to cool down. Now to make the dressing. This is a tahini dressing. I've never had a tahini in a bottle before, and now I know why. It was pretty impossible to get out. Only a tahini water would like squeeze out. So I opened it up to scoop about three to four tablespoons of a paste that was stuck in the bottom into a bowl. Gave it a good mix until it was a smooth consistency. Now to flavor it. I squeezed in some lemon juice, using my hand to catch any lemon pips from going into the bowl. Added a good pinch of molding salt, my favorite salt. About one tablespoon of golden syrup and gave it a good mix. As you can see, tahini seizes up when liquid is added and thickens to like this paste. So to loosen it back up again, you just keep adding bits of water until you get a thinner consistency. To start with, it looks a little bit split and I always get this little worried feeling that it's not gonna come back together again, but eventually it will come together and it will go super creamy and glossy. It just takes a little bit of work to get there. 
I checked the taste to see if it needs any more flavour, and this definitely did. It needed a little bit of everything, actually. The tahini flavour was quite strong, and I wanted to be able to taste the acidity of the lemon and have the syrup give it a soft sweetness so it's not too bitter. After another taste, it was perfect. I placed everything in neat little piles in the bowl instead of just chucking them all in. This is purely for the satisfaction of seeing them all perfectly separated in their sections before mixing together. Just a little bit of extra effort that generally makes me so happy. So now it's time to bring everything together, the best bit. I crumbled a block of feta with my hands into the bowl and mixed it through. So sometimes I mix with my hands and sometimes I mix with a spoon. It's purely based off feel. I find it really hard to describe my thoughts sometimes when I cook because I often do things quite naturally um, and just off like feel and instinct. But basically, it's because some of the ingredients don't mix as well with a single stroke of a spoon cutting through them. But with your fingers, you can really get in, lift everything up, split things apart naturally and gently as well, not like as aggressively as a spoon. It's just a lot more efficient and easier to manipulate with feel. But sometimes I do want to use a spoon. So when I add the sweet potatoes and chickpeas, the spoon just has a better feel of like getting around the edges. And it's just if I use my hands, I feel like I'd squish the sweet potato and crush it. But I, the spoon does add that kind of delicate touch at that point. Yeah, it's purely based off feel. But hopefully that kind of explains why I use my hands sometimes and spoon another time. So I'm mixing together with spoon this time as these ingredients should incorporate more easily than the other ingredients. My bowl's a bit too small to fit the couscous in. I always underestimate how much food I make. So I tip the contents into the couscous pan and mix it all together with a spoon. Then add the tahini dressing to mix in and provide more moisture to the salad and bring it all together. Once it's all thoroughly mixed together, give it a taste and see whether it needs anything. Mine needed a little bit of salt to enhance the flavours and tie it all together a bit more. This salad will keep in the fridge for about three days. We had it for dinner and then lunch on the third day to have something different in between. Then spoon the salad into bowls ready to eat. This salad is super adaptable. You can switch many ingredients for other items or add to it. So in this case, George wanted some chicken to go with his. So I just cooked that separately and added this on top. So you can also do any type of nut. You can use a different dressing, different veg. The list goes on. Adjust it to what you like. 